and welcome to Rapid Tabletop. My name is Leonard, but you can call me Leo. Today we'll be going through the painting guide of the Terrain Train. My initial intention was to have the how to build and how to paint in the same video, but during my editing of the first video I did notice it was reaching the 25 limit that I have for my videos. So I decided to have these in two parts. So with more time given I can now spend more time on explaining how I use the different kinds of paints I use. For example the contrast paints is one of those I use a lot when it comes to terrain. But before starting of course please do consider subscribing and leaving a like. And if you do actually like the content and want to support me a little bit more, please head over to my Patreon page to help me out to make more content. Each month I will be asking my patrons what kind of video they want me to make and that's the one I'm going to try to make for my patrons and for you guys on YouTube of course. So the first color I add onto a black base coat is dark sea blue. Now this is a color that is not pre-made for airbrushing so I have to thin it out. Now this color I have pre-mixed with some thinners so I don't need to mix it every single time I need to use it. Just use a empty bottle and mix up your preferred color with some thinner or whatever preferred medium that you want to mix it up with. Now as usual I always do some kind of mistakes when I make my videos. In this case I actually, well it's not a mistake but I did clean my airbrush quite thoroughly this time. Now you might be wondering but that's a good thing right to clean your airbrush? Yeah it is of course you should be very careful with your airbrush but every time I make a deep clean with my airbrush for some reason the first time I use it afterwards it, there's some kind of weird setups when I just try to use it. So in this first clip that we saw here some of you might have noticed it was a little bit hard for me to uh, get the color on exactly where I wanted so I was struggling a little bit with that. But after this first clip here I uh, decided to go through the airbrush again, test it out before I actually started doing more recording. So from now on it should be quite okay with airbrushing. So let's get on with it alright? Now as usual when working with an airbrush or a normal brush when you are at the highlighting stages always leave some of the previous darker color. In this case I have of course black as a uh, base coat so I want to leave some of the black in the recesses. As you may notice it looks really uh, highly saturated now when I'm spraying. That's just the video quality at the moment and in the end you will see the final product what it looks like. Next highlight is Hellblau from Vallejo. This one I place just like with the previous layer. Make sure that you leave some of the previous color, making a nice transition from black to yeah, highlighted black I guess. Now my final color here for the highlights is a light grey from the MIG Jimenez range. As you can see my highlights are quite extreme. This will be corrected later on in later stages. I do highlight my models and terrain pretty extremely because when I do use filters or washes later on it will be toned down a lot. But in any case the final highlight is only placed at certain places locations where the light would hit the object or in my case just some places that I think is interesting to have extra highlights on. 
such as these corners. As you can see now, it looks really bluish and no resemblance of black. But as I said before, don't worry about it. We'll tone it down with a filter or a wash, whatever you want to call it later on, and we'll see that it will be much more black and with highlights instead. Now, moving on to the next color here, I do have some problems with metal colors. And due to this problem I have with metal colors through my airbrush, I have a hard time controlling it. So if you guys have any suggestions on what kind of uh, color or brand I should use when I use spray metallics for an airbrush, please leave that in a comment and I will look into it. Because I've been trying several different brands and it's kind of hard to uh, run it through an airbrush, for me at least. But let's move on to when I'm struggling with a metal paint, shall we? So here I'm using Vallejo Range, metallic color for airbrush. This one is called Dur Aluminum. Oh, I actually got to say that word correctly. Dur Aluminum. Quite hard for me to say it, at least. And here's something I should have thought about before. Since I do know I have some problems with metallics through my airbrush, I should have started with metallics before I went on to highlighting the black. So if I would have started with the metallics first, I can be more rough and not so precise. Meaning I could clean up with black later on and follow up with the highlights. So if you're like me and having some problems with metallics for an airbrush, put on the metallics first and then you move on with the black. That's what I'm gonna do in the future at least, if I can remember it. Now for this terrain train, I will be using the same metallic color for all the metals. And what I mean with all the metals, that's gonna be like bronze, gold, uh, various shades of uh, metal. This I will modulate later on with contrast colors from Games Workshop. And I'll show you how I do this. Not shown in this video, but I will include a picture of the color here, is that I painted the plasma coils with another color here. This is also from the Vallejo range, and this one is called Liquid Silver. I used Liquid Silver 790. Why I use this Liquid Silver is because I want some extra shine on the plasma coils. And here you can see me correcting my mistakes from the metals. The roof took a serious hit from all the metal spread out here. As you can see I have more control with the normal colors. Now I'm gonna move on to spraying contrast paint through the airbrush. If you don't feel comfortable with this, I, I'm not gonna force you to do it, alright? But if you do feel comfortable with it, this is one thing I do here now. And if you do put the contrast paint through the airbrush, make sure you clean it properly afterwards. It is a little bit sticky, so as I said, make sure you really clean that airbrush afterwards, alright? So I've chosen the contrast paint Talisar Blue from Games Workshop. I like the tone of this blue color for the plasma coils. I focus mainly around the rims of the plasma coil here and then I move on to putting a light coat over the rest of the plasma coils. Making sure that there are some parts that are still shining through brightly with the silver. And I'm not sure you can see it here in the video, but the plasma coils are really shining through. And this is thanks to the liquid silver that I've been using as a base coat.
Now at this stage I'm pretty much done with airbrush work here, so I'm going to start moving on to the normal brush work. Starting off with my favorite paint set from the Games Work range, the Contrast Paints. Now of course there's a big struggle between painters using the contrast paints. Some think it's cheating, it's not real painting, but I do think this is a great tool that we have as painters to get models and terrain into a very nice standard on a very fast pace. I'll talk about that more in detail in a future video, how I use my contrast paints. But for this video I will stay on topic, keeping it to the terrain train. So the first thing we'll take a look at is the various metal colors that we have on the train. So that's going to be the bronze and there are some gold parts here also but you can barely see them. But we'll go into detail about this right now. So the first contrast paint I'll be using is Gorgrunta Fur. On top of a bright metal color or in this case the one that I have a problem saying do do our aluminum yeah that's right anyhow putting this gorgrunta fur on top of a bright metal color will give an appearance of a bronze now why not paint directly with a bronze color you might ask well this has to do with what i always do speed painting the less colors i can use the faster i can paint of course so blocking in all the metals with one metal color will actually save me time by using a normal metal color first and then using for example this Gorgrunta fur. I will now at the same time get shades and everything that I need from one single color. If I would have done this the other way around, I would first have to paint the metals or normal metal colors, then open a new pot, paint all the bronze, paint all the gold, paint all the dark metals, and then follow up with different shades. In this case here, I get the shading directly, I get the effect of metals directly, and it's a very fast and effective way of painting for me at least. Now, I wouldn't recommend this for your miniatures at all times unless you're mass producing. And remember, if you think it's a little bit too strong, you can always tone it down or desaturate it with some glaze medium or the contrast medium. But in this case here, it is directly from the pot. Now I'm picking out a lot of details here that I think should be in bronze. Mainly it's going to be the main support beams and some other minor details. I don't want the bronze to be too dominating, as I still want a lot of the details to be in the normal metal colors. Next up I'm going to paint lights and computer screens. Starting off with contrast paint again of course, Plague Bearer Flesh. This color I use for some lights and of course the computer screens. Next up I have another one and that's Yanden Yellow, this one I use for the front light. And finally I have a red color also, Blood Angels Red. And of course all of these are contrast paints. These light colors are now painted on top of silver or met a bright metal color. This is because I want a shiny appearance that represents a light. And here finally I'm using Space Wolves Grey. 
this one I use for the windows. So from this point on it's not straight from the pot anymore. As you can see I have a wet palette in front of me and on this wet palette I do my mix. In this case here I'm using a glaze medium from Vallejo. Mixing it up with Talisar Blue so I have more control when I'm applying it onto the plasma coils. Because if I do not desaturate or mix it up with a glaze medium here, it's going to be highly concentrated and it's going to ruin the whole effect I'm after here. So I make sure that I thin it down first and so I can apply multiple layers instead, thus giving me more control of the end result. As you can see here, applying this thin down the Talisar Blue applies nicely. It focuses in the recesses and when there's a little bit too much I can just easily pick it up. And now for the next color. Again of course contrast paint, Basiliconum Grey. This one again I mix out with a glaze medium. This one is quite heavily diluted because I want to apply this onto the black areas. And I do again want to have full control of what I'm doing. I can always apply a second layer if needed. And if you notice now it actually becomes a lot darker. Some might call this a filter, meaning modulating the color that you have. And this is one example how I use contrast paints. They're perfect for modulating colors and appearances. As long as you mix them out with a contrast medium or a glaze medium, you can control the colors and the hues that you are using on your models. Continuing with the contrast Basiliconum Grey, this time I add more of the contrast paint. It's gonna be a stronger tone now and there's a point of this because I'm gonna use it onto the metals now. Using it on the metals, it now darkens the metal into a more natural metal look. It's still very bright, I do know that, but I do like a high contrast metal. This mixture I also add on to the bronze. And the reason for this is to mix the bronze with the normal metals. Ahead of time I had not planned which color I wanted a skull. So that's why I'm going back to the airbrush here. And while I'm at it I'll just paint the canisters on the side in a different color as well. For the bone color I'm using bone white from the game air from Vallejo. And now back to contrast paints. Here I'm using Skeleton Horde. I thin it down just a tiny bit. And over the green canisters I use the classic Agrax Earthshade directly from the pot. And in this next step you will see me dry brushing. Nothing complicated but it is my first time using a makeup brush. So what you're actually seeing here now on this video is my actual first attempt with a makeup brush. And I was really uncertain if I wanted to upload this or not. but. The result was really good and I'm really satisfied with a makeup brush for dry brushing. And I can actually re recommend this for you and there are specialist uh, brushes for this. But the makeup brush is actually quite nice and I see no issues with it. Now dry brushing with a makeup brush. I was quite surprised of the amount of color that you could pick up on the brush. Also, it did seem like it kept the color moist or whatever you want to call it on the brush. 
Thus, I could cover a larger area with just one application from the pot. And in the end, I did not use that much color from my bleached bone that I'm using here, or Tyrant Skull as it's called when it's the dry brushing paint from Games Workshop. Now, I'm dry brushing this terrain train because it's a part of terrain. If it was a normal miniature, I would probably not be dry brushing this much. And I do love dry brushing, it's a technique that some painters might think is for beginners, but I do believe dry brushing has its place and uses. In this case it's adding to the weathering effects, and also it blends all the colors together, creating a softer contrast between the different colors on the terrain train. Once I was done with the dry brushing, I saw that it had picked out some cables. So of course I decided to paint these cables in a very nice red color as usual. Any red color will do. Now at this stage I'm just goofing around a little bit with the colors. And I do recommend that you actually experiment and have fun when you paint. Because I do believe when you're actually having fun or experimenting with painting, that's when you truly learn new techniques. You learn what works and what doesn't work for you. And from experimenting and playing around a bit with the paint, you do make mistakes sometimes. And sometimes they're bad mistakes and sometimes they're actually happy mistakes. So let's see what I do here for my experimentation. The bronze on this terrain train was quite dominating. So I wanted to break that up a little bit. I decided to have some weathering effects on it, so adding some scratches with a normal silver or metal paint. Just some simple brush strokes with a used up brush. Just add it at some random locations. Furthermore, I had ran out of my normal rust color, so I had to make my own this time. So I mixed up some orange with some browns and then thinned it down with some glaze medium. And it worked out pretty okay. This rust color I can place in various metal areas and let it pool a little bit so it becomes a little bit more saturated in some recesses. But anyhow, here you have it, fully painted and done. And that's the terrain train painted in a quite short amount of time. I do hope you learned something new from this and can apply this in your painting techniques for terrain and larger objects like this. And of course there will be more how to build and how to paint coming from me. And already my patrons at my Patreon page are already making their votes on what I should do for the next video. If you would like to become a patron and help me out to decide what content I will provide for you guys, head over to my Patreon page and sign up. And of course, if you do enjoy my content, subscribe and leave a like. It really helps me out and motivates me to make the next video for you guys. But this is it for this time, alright? So I'll see you guys in the next video.